true stories of people encountering mysterious creatures. Quote, I was young and had fallen asleep in the car. I woke up to my parents frantic in the car but were parked in our driveway. My mom was worried about something in the field if it had rabies. My dad said he's going to slip into the house and get the shotgun. Anyways, in the field across, there was this dog thing illuminated by the snow and moon. But it had short hair like a poodle. It was enormous, its head would come up to the top of our Buick. Only instead of a head, was a ball. Like it was stuck in a metal ball. It was thrashing about, so maybe it was. However, no houses in the area had a dog of that size or look. We ended up getting inside. My mom called the non-emergency police line and my dad watched it from the balcony. It thrashed and wiggled into the woods. The cops did a quick sweep, but nothing. End quote. Welcome back. Dark recaps here. Before we continue, if you end up enjoying this video, I would appreciate you dropping a like to help me reach a wider audience. I would also be very grateful if you considered subscribing for more content like this. Let's begin. College Field Trip Quote Years ago, I went on a college field trip fairly high up in the mountains. Not deserted or anything but low population. As is my thing with any sort of travel, I took a walk around the place around 11 p.m. I just really like experiencing how places are once the bustle quiets down. As I'm walking along the main road, I approach a place with a small path to the right, leading up higher into the mountains. I start to hear a buzzing but dismiss it as the altitude messing with my eardrums. But as I get closer to the path I realize that the buzzing sounds a lot like children crying. Now I don't know why, but it never occurred to me to turn around and go back, I just kept on walking. I finally approach the foot of the small path and I'm hearing a screaming chorus of weeping children. I stared down the path and, for the love of all that is holy I don't know why I did this, shouted, I'm just passing through. The crying stopped and I made it back to my room. Next day our advisor announced that we all had to leave after breakfast. Apparently, a few of the other students claimed to have been visited in their rooms by ghost children during the night and were hysterical. I never told them what happened to me. To this day I don't know if I was brave, stupid, or in shock fueled by denial. End quote. A mystery to this day. Quote. I don't exactly know what creature it was, but anyway here is my story. If anyone knows what it was, let me know. When I was in the fifth grade, we went on a trip with our school to this hostel at the edge of a forest. Me and the kids in my room did the usual thing of saying we saw something at the edge of the forest. One night, we did it again and we had already gotten a bit paranoid. We thought that we actually saw something on this night when suddenly we all saw this pair of purple glowing dots at the edge of the forest. At first we thought it was probably just a reflection or something, until those dots disappeared and reappeared about 10 meters to the right. When they reappeared, we could vaguely make the outer edges of the creature's body which looked somewhat human. The eyes then turned to the right and this second pair of purple eyes appeared. At this point we were really scared. It got worse when we realized those dots or probably eyes were looking at us, from our window to the forest where those creatures were standing was maybe 15 to 20 meters. We sat there looking at them for about 10 minutes until those creatures turned around and left. To this day, I don't know what I saw at the edge of the forest and what they were doing so close to us. End quote. Three Mysterious Creatures Quote I've had three totally different bizarre experiences in my lifetime. Citing one. East Central Tennessee. I was young, around seven. My sister was five. We were living in an Amish community in the middle of nowhere. Caves are numerous. Our room was on the second story. 
Every morning there would be a creature, once in a blue moon there were two, that would fly by our window. It would perch on a tree not far from the house. Sometimes we would hear it land on the roof, and as kids we thought it was in the attic, but thinking back, it was definitely just landing on the roof. But what was this creature? It was hairless, but not a bat. It had a large head crest and a long mouth or beak thing. For lack of a better word, it was a small pterodactyl. My sister and I didn't really have a concept of what a pterodactyl even was. But it was incredibly real, so real that my parents believed us. My dad showed us that it wasn't in our attic, but it didn't change the fact that at dawn most mornings, there was some kind of creature there. My parents never saw it themselves, but my mother heard wings flapping once, when she came up because we were calling her that it was, in the attic, or had landed on the roof. Sighting 2 I don't know if I can call this a mythical creature, but it's definitely strange. I became a substitute teacher for several counties in North Florida. One morning I was driving to a school early in the morning. The sun was already well up, it was not dark. I was on the phone with my boyfriend, and suddenly saw something, or rather didn't. There was a shape flying over the highway in the opposite direction I was driving. I say shape because it was invisible. You could just make out an outline of some kind of flying object due to how the sun was reflecting on it. The best way I can describe the shape was vaguely like a military drone. It was too small for there to be a person inside, so I imagine it was remote controlled. As it and I got closer, it seemed to shift in a way that stopped the weird sun reflection on it, and it totally disappeared. I've never gotten a good explanation for what that was. Sighting 3 My most recent mythical creature was a doppelganger. I got married to the boyfriend that I mentioned previously. He and I moved to North Central Texas due to his job, and I became a stay-at-home wife so I could work full-time on a paper that dismantled the background of a specific Christian denomination. My husband was getting up at 3 quarters a.m. for work. I stayed in bed and slept in. I started experiencing sleep paralysis, which was absolutely terrifying. Rather, I'm chalking it up to sleep paralysis because everything else just scares me. The first incident was strange. My husband and I were in a one-bedroom apartment, but we had converted the bedroom into a full working office and our living room was our bedroom. The bed was near the front door, you would open the door, and the foot of the bed would be to your left. I was laying in bed starting to stir when I heard the door unlock. I opened my eyes and saw my husband walk in. He seemed very frustrated, almost angry, which was highly unlikely. I asked him what he was doing home from work and he snapped at me. I tried to sit up and realized I could not. I was overwhelmed by what I can best describe as a malevolent spirit. It was like something was sitting on my chest. I could no longer see my husband, but I could hear him looking for something. He found whatever he was looking for and then left, locking the door behind him. I felt myself get very drowsy, and I drifted off. I woke up some time later feeling disturbed. I got in contact with my husband, who was working for a major private company that is contracted to do government work. I asked him if he had been by that morning. He said no. I had no reason not to believe him. At the time, I thought it had just been a very vivid dream. However, that was not the only time. His doppelganger would show up frequently in the mornings after he had left. Sometimes I would feel extremely afraid, other times violated. Sometimes he would crawl in bed with me, other times I could feel him breathing on my face. I could never move my body during these encounters, and I could only open my eyes when he would initially walk through the door. The closer he would physically get to me, the more my eyes were forced to close. He never abused me in any way though. We changed our sleeping arrangements and I got on a better sleep schedule. My husband got off overtime shifts, 
and was able to be home during the time frame his doppelganger would show up. The doppelganger, unsurprisingly, didn't make another appearance. That is, until we moved. We moved to another apartment and my husband got a new job, though in the same vein as the last. For a little while, he was working bizarre shifts, and some mornings he had to leave very early. I remember hearing the door unlock and hearing his footsteps walk through our apartment. However, the difference was that I could feel the same presence as before. The last day the doppelganger ever showed up was around two years ago. This time I heard the door open and multiple entities entered. I was filled with more fear than ever before. They felt genuinely evil. They were there to hurt me. My entire body was trembling. I also could feel the doppelganger there. Despite him still feeling malevolent, I could also feel that he was feeling protective of me. The bedroom door opened and the doppelganger was arguing with the other entities. I remember him distinctly saying that they were not allowed to hurt me. The entities did not speak direct words, but I could tell that they had been attracted to me because he kept showing up. He drew them there, intentionally or not. He told them he would never come to me again if they left. They fought and argued, but eventually there was some kind of agreement. They all left through the front door. I got up out of bed. My bedroom door was open and the front door was unlocked, bizarre because I had locked the door when my husband had left for work that morning, and I always closed the bedroom door. The doppelganger has never appeared since then. I'm not sure what to make of all this. End quote. Underwater encounter. Quote. This isn't exactly in the vein of fairies or gnomes, but it was something strange. I was snorkeling in Ireland a few years ago, when out the bottom corner of my mask I saw a light, like my visor was literally lit up like someone had shown a bright torch up at me. When I turned in its direction I found a small fish sitting on the seabed, and it was incredible. It had a longish serpent-shaped body that was bright gold and shiny. But more beautiful were the fins that jutted out of its sides. They were like large peacock emerald fans, each one as long as its body and wide. The entire animal shone like it was lit up, or like it was made out of shiny metal. You know when metal just catches the light right, and reflects it back at your eyes. It was that sort of effect. But there was more luminosity than its small size made sense for. It glowed. I wouldn't have believed it was real except it moved its fins or tail lazily every so often. When I took out my snorkel and dove towards it to investigate more, I suddenly realized I was out much deeper than I intended to be, and the small fish was probably not that small at all, but large and just far away. The difference between 6 feet and 20. Where I was snorkeling is quite famous for riptides created by the swell framed by two rocky outcrops. I panicked a little and surfaced. The beach was stressfully distant and I had been gradually dragged out. I tore myself away from the fish and headed back. I was shaken. When I got back, I explained what I saw to my dad, who was an expert all things ocean and angler. He kind of waved away what I said about it glowing, but was stumped by my description. He thought maybe a weird colored, I guess he thought I was exaggerating the intensity of its coloration, garnered, but I'm very familiar with them and it was the wrong shape and wrong everything. I even grabbed a pen in frustration and drew it, I still have the drawing somewhere, and he couldn't account for it at all. I searched the internet, books, everything and never come across anything like what I saw. I don't know what it was, maybe a rare species or, like my dad said, some very rare coloration and mutation of one? But I can see it in my mind still and honestly, it was like bumping into a mythological creature, it was that stunning and unreal. It wasn't golden, it was gold and lit up the sea around it. I'm not exaggerating and time hasn't just built it up in my head, I know what I saw, I just can't explain it. End quote. Sinister Goat 
quote, I am a wishful skeptic. Every haunting case I've researched, every report or paranormal activity tied to a book deal or movie basis, even failed attempts to cash into James Randi's never successfully claimed paranormal challenge, to me is a study of the human condition, our want to believe, be unique, be heard. Even others providing logic generosity in their wants for it to be true, however the one in my family is odd in that no one wants to talk about it, and my father, who it happened to won't talk about it point blank. I will summarize, my father's mother told me about this, and my father will not talk about it. His state of mind, he's a war vet, former marine survival instructor, desert storm and desert shield infantry vet, so he has seen some horrid, tragic things but all grounded in the evil that men can do, or just tragic civilians, military accidents. Before he enlisted, as a late teen, early 70s, he and his cousin Eddie were driving late at night in the back rural county in California. They picked up a hitchhiker, a girl that seemed around their age. At that time it was not wholly unknown to do so, but it was already not as common due to rising crime, etc. The conversation was a bit off with her, with Eddie driving the car, my father was talking with this girl, until he looked at her reflection in the mirror. What he saw, just sort of took his breath away. Not in a good way, but a panic dread, completely frozen where he sat. In the reflection of the girl he was speaking to, what was looking back at him was not human, nor humanoid. It resembled something of a, sinister goat. As he looked at it, it looked back at him. What terrified him most was its eyes, and that it smiled back at him. The ride ended quickly, and the girl was dropped off at a house not far from where she was picked up, by her own instruction. To this day my father will not speak of it. But, in looking at what has happened to him, what he's seen, what he's had to do, it's not known to the family if this was a bad night. Was it a harbinger, or something potentially worse? End quote. Taken by Fay. Quote. Before I started senior year of college, I went to visit my best friend in Scotland. She took me to visit her aunt in the Highlands. She lived across the street from an old cemetery. Aunt wanted us to visit a local hike that ended at something called the Giant's Chair or Throne. Hike was nice and easy. So it was basically Helen, her friend, and me. Aunt stayed in the car at the beginning of the trail. It was a short walk like a mile or two. At some point the other two girls got ahead of me. That's all I remember. This next part was told to me. Apparently, they turned around and I was gone. They ended up getting the ant and searching for me. Local police told them that I had probably gone off to a party and waited a bit. So they spent the whole night searching for me. They called my folks who looked into getting a flight to find me. My folks were in the States. This is where I start remembering again. I woke up in a field or meadow and went to the closest house and called my friend. I was quite a few miles away from my starting point. I needed to go to an ER and explain what happened. My friend and her aunt came with me of course. The ER checked me and saw no sexual trauma but they took a rape kit anyway. This happened years ago. So it eventually came back negative. Anyhow, local police decided that I had a seizure or took drugs. I have seizures so I don't take drugs. It didn't feel like a seizure though. Also after a seizure I usually lay down and sleep because seizures are exhausting. So I have no clue why I would have walked so far or how I disappeared off the trail. My friend's aunt claims I was taken by the Fae. She has strong faith in them and gave us all iron nails that she made herself while we were there. When I was found, I had my clothes and that nail in my pocket. She claims that the nail saved me from the Fae. The only reason I do not believe is because I do have seizures. But why I wonder about it is because I have no memories of what happened during this time frame. 
So years later I tried to get myself hypnotized to see what happened. The guy was able to do it. He claims he got me to talk about several things. But when he tried to get me to talk about this part, they claimed I became upset and said something along the lines of, I can't, they'll know, and they'll try to get me again. My mom was there and claims this is basically what I said. Never tried to bring back those memories since then. End quote. A tall humanoid. Quote. Once I was afraid of the sun going down, as it meant that I had to sleep soon. Attempting to sleep would cause me to feel things crawling on or around me. As this progressed, it would get worse and worse. At first, it was small things grabbing, touching my face, laying next to me where I could feel their weight against me. It evolved into feeling small animals going across my bed above my head area, eventually little feet like mice stepping over my face sitting on my head. I would swat at them eyes closed until I felt it leave. At times it would be birds sitting on my pillow pecking my head. Then it got worse. I would go to bed and wake up. I learned to keep my eyes closed after waking up so that I do not see these things that would be there as they would notice me sometimes and scream in my face leaving bruises and claw marks in my collarbone skin. One particular morning, I woke and could feel this woman who sounded elderly, grabbing me by my neck desperately trying to get me to open my eyes and look at her face. I did once, and was subjected to a horrific vision of a rotting woman. Her face and hands were rotten and nearly skeletal. Her eye sockets filled with decayed flesh and eye nerves. She would always make a deafening scream when I saw her face. I feared waking up and loathed sleeping, it always ended up that way. That's after something miraculously happened during one of these nights of horror. Instead of the frightening mice and rotting old woman I saw a tall humanoid being. She had feminine features but was tall with no wings but terribly bright red eyes. She only started hovering over me next to my bed. After this encounter I never once had a bad encounter at night trying to sleep, I believe that the figure was a banshee and was warning me of the impending hardship about to befall my family as we were evicted a little while afterwards and made homeless. It was only later that I learned Irish descendants supposedly all have a connection to a banshee that watches their family and gives them warnings of bad omens. Ever since then, I've prayed to this being for the last five years give or take. I do it every time before I sleep as thanks for riddance of those nights of horror. It's such a small thing with no explanation. It had impacted me ever since and I haven't got to share it without skepticism from those willing to listen. End quote. The Hospital Corridor Quote Back in summer of 2013 I worked at the Pomona Valley Hospital. Hats off to the men and women there helping serve the sick. I was a contracted guard. Didn't really do much other than stand around on the graveyard shift and the only place that ever stayed busy was the ER. It always had something going on. I mean this was Pomona. Nightly stabbings, car accidents, and various other things that put your insides outside were normal. Anyway one night like all the rest I was standing guard by the ER doors directing visitors and anyone else that needed assistance. Then early that morning maybe around 3? I honestly don't remember. A patient in a gown walks through a set of double doors that normally only open for doctors with a batch. I figured a doctor buzzed her through as she walked right by me looking lost and a bit confused. I called out and asked if she needed help finding something. She smiled at me, and a rush of noise hit me as doors started moving and doctors started moving around their day to day. I blinked and she was gone. I called out over the radio about what I'd seen and the control checked the feed. Sure enough, there I was standing out in an empty corridor except when I called out I was alone. What's twice as weird? is that night had been particularly busy and that five or so minutes I experienced never happened. I was very clearly awake in the video feed too, looking around doing my thing. 
The period of time that it took for the doors to open and for me to call out was a couple of seconds. I vividly remember the whole experience being a few minutes long. I never got a straight answer to explain it. Everyone's seen something though, hospitals are old. End quote. Have you ever experienced anything similar to this before? Let me know in the comments below. Please consider leaving a like on this video. If you got all the way to the end, I think you should subscribe to me. Thanks. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time. This was Dark Recaps.